I got the feeling after 31 shot attempts in the first period, it was only a matter of time before the dam would start to break a little bit. And that time was 9.23 of the second period when Pavel Buchnevich converted a beautiful feed from Zibanejad. The irony of that is that it was Pavel Buchnevich. And uh, <laughs> look, he's looking for goals. He had one against the Islanders before the All-Star break, but he only had one goal in all of December. And then he had two goals in January coming into tonight's game. But the really neat thing for me here is that this becomes a three on two. You've got speed coming up the middle and on the wing with Sabanajad. Typically, when you've got three guys with numbers against two, Kreider would be the center lane drive. But I think Sabanajad notices a crossover here and has an opportunity to go wide. And look at how wide he actually goes here to get this pass to meet Bushnevich. Bushnevich goes in the boards hard. And John, if this puck hits the post and doesn't go in, right. he stays down. Yeah. But nobody has any pain after they <laughs> score, and he pops right back And up. his face looks the same whether he scores or doesn't score, but right. he converts in this well, one. Well, what's been neat is the narrative around him is that he's been getting scoring opportunities. And in fact, since December 1st, he's had 26 scoring chances. He's getting chances. And that's why the coach has had confidence. Give him another opportunity on the top line. Let him play. Let him work his way through it. And that play jump-started the Ranger offense because two and a half minutes later, the Rangers All-Star Game participant, Chris Kreider, who ably filled in for Mika Zibanejad, who missed the game with an injury, Kreider was able to score in what has become textbook Chris Kreider fashion. Absolutely. And what's become popular in hockey in the last 10 years is screening the goalie. Nobody's done it more than Chris Kreider for the New York Rangers. The Rangers have scored 21 goals through a screen this year. The last time I checked, John, Kreider was in on 12 of them. He's in on two more tonight, one of which he deflects while he's screening the goalie. But it was more than that for him. It was the entire hockey game. He was setting guys up. He was getting his own opportunities. And this is what you have to wonder if the Rangers do choose to trade him, is can you lose that value that might help you get in or get you in the fight and get you close enough to keep meaningful hockey being played and develop for everybody. But his speed sets up this play up the ice. Bushnevich gets the goal. He gets the secondary assist. That's a primary assist to me, screening that well in front of a goaltender for Zibanejad's goal. And then he gets a piece of this one. So if you want to talk about giving guys points for assist, of course you get a point for a goal. It would be interesting to note. If the NHL ever chose to qualify the screen, how many more points does Kreider put on the board for you? And maybe in the future, can Lemieux do that job as well? Right. We've seen Howden help a little bit, but who's going to be that guy, John? That's one problem that the Rangers may have. 18 goals on the year now for Kreider, 11 of those in the last 17 games. That gave the Rangers a 2 0 lead. They weren't done. Style points of the night go to the most stylish player on the team and one of the most stylish flair-driven players in the league, and that's Artemi Panera. Look, I take a lot of pride in my splits, right? Like, you could invite me to anybody's wedding in the summertime, and I will start your dance floor because I oh. can get right down. I wonder... I do not want to be there for that. <laughs> I wonder how well he gets down. Because we've seen him get up, but right. can he get down? Right. And it's a new record. But, listen, uh, when you watch his game and you see his impact, it is loosely used in hockey. 200-foot player. They say that about a lot of players, but it's been really neat to get to know the player on a game Game by game level, when you see Panarin's compete, I think it's rubbed off well on Zabanajad. You see him walk in and see ice, take ice. He takes his open shot, and I think that helps his pass because he doesn't pass up as many shots as I thought he was going to coming into this season. He's been such a thrill to watch, so much energy, and he's brought it every night. Uh, unfortunately for the Rangers in the final game before the great break, he's not available, and that really hurts. I think the theme of the Rangers getting close in the playoffs before the break. Coming out of the break, are you kidding me with this play here, Johnny? I mean, nobody sees that becoming a goal until after it happens. And we're going to get to that in a moment. But the play starts 200 feet from where he scores the goal. And it's great to see that he's able to recover the puck, be that 200-foot player that starts the play, and knows how to get up the ice on the left side here. Faust finds him with speed, manages the puck through the neutral zone, and then attacks this way? I, I didn't see it coming, John. I didn't think he had a backhand move. Howard doesn't move. Check out this move. All right, so 5-9 is a new record eclipsing his previous at 5-6. Right. Easily. 
how about the yeah. ref, though? I know. You know? Yeah, Kelly Sutherland. Yeah, right? there might yeah. be a note from the league saying, hey, let's uh, – but how do you how do you – how do you do that? Um, I thought he was lucky not to fall, too. Down on one angle, holding his balance. I don't think you – could you think he can get higher than 5'9"? And nine? the left foot this time. Usually he goes that, right foot because that's was, his primary I, foot. You got that. Yeah, I know we, we analyzed should. this highlight like <laughs> way too much. Yeah, exactly. But we're going to keep doing it because he's going to keep doing it's it. It's That's 70 points this season in 48 games for Panarin. And he now has 15 points in his last eight games. And again, jump-starting a Ranger win. A win for Igor Shesterkin, now 3-1 and one in the NHL. He darn near had as many goals as he does losses. <laughs> what was he doing? <laughs> well, he was going for it, yeah. wasn't he? Uh, we're referring to his empty net attempts. Uh, in January, January 9th, Pecorine had one, and previous to that, it was Mike Smith. But let's talk about the work that he had in this game before he shot for the empty net. This save right here is the big one five minutes into the game. And I love the read here, John. This is what you're looking for with young goalies. How well do they manage their positioning off their reads? And you see that. He had another great night at the clear, open-sided shots that he saw. He controlled the puck well. If he doesn't freeze it, he puts, his, puts it in the corner. And his glove, north. He's got a very good reactionary glove from outside the dots. I think that's exceptional. Rebound control again on point. And here he goes, John. He's going for it. And it takes a lot of nerve with the set of gloves the goalie has, the stick, to be able to go for it. I mean, if there's one guy that you're going to lay your money on right now to be the next goalie to score a goal, my money's on Igor Shosturkin. Yeah, yeah. He's got the nerve to go for it. Yeah. He's going to go for it again. Any opportunity, which is exciting. That's something we haven't seen here. And the scouting time. report is that he will do it. I mean, he will score because he does it in practice all the time. Yeah. He's usually pretty accurate. And you could see his face when that one was starting to bounce wide. He, like, oh, I can't <laughs> he's got I the confidence that. for yeah. it.